specular highlight, I gotta have another uh, chapter on specular highlights, you're gonna get white. So, you know, I can, this, this, this color picker helps me overexpose and underexpose regions. Now, supposing that my, uh, my light was coming from in front, the, the, the best way to do this is, you know, I might have uh, a color, there's my mid-tone, okay? But if my light's coming from the front, then it means that the back is going to fall into shadow. If there's no, nothing behind this object, you know, to cast light on the back side, it's going to fall into shadow. It's going to become darker. So I'm going to, the first thing I should do is whenever things get darker and you're going to cast shadows on things, they're going to become less saturated than this, this, this color right here. So I'm going to pick a color on the left side, and this little uh, dotted line here, um, you can see this hatched line here, and there's this another straight hatched line of the tick mark. This is the current luminance of whatever color I put on. So I'm going to choose a color that is below this hatched line, somewhere along here, and a color on the left side so it's desaturated. So maybe it'll be, eh, I guess, about there. I'm just eyeballing it. So this color, uh, yeah. I've chosen a color that is um, darker than the current color. Now I'm going to illuminate that. It's been illuminated, and I'll clean up my, my my silhouette. Okay, and now I'm going to take this color here, and I'm going to choose to saturate and brighten the color. And maybe I'll do that again. I'm going to choose to saturate and brighten just a bit. You know, everything in moderation. You got to use your eyeballs to to figure out how bright to make it. Um, I haven't discovered the hard and fast rule yet. But what is important is that you understand whether or not your colors are being overexposed or underexposed. And now I'm going to put my specular highlight in place. Now the specular highlight, I was wanting to leave this for uh, for later. Um, let me see if I can find a good example of a specular highlight. Um, aha, hang on just a sec. I'm going to run, run back and get something. Okay, specular highlight. Specular highlights, uh, highlights are more than just these little shiny little dots that we throw on things. If we look at my trusty black Nintendo DS Lite, do you see that? See that reflection right there? That's a specular reflection. You see how the edge, you got this bright white edge sitting on the side of that thing? That's also a specular highlight. All that is, is that is a specular highlight of the windows outside. And because you've got this curving surface, this is like a curved mirror in a funhouse, right? You know how those things are, they kind of warp and distort your image. Well, what's happening is that the, the beveled edge of this Nintendo DS Lite is going and it's acting like the funhouse mirror and it's taking the image of this window, this reflected image, God, that's grubby. Um, it's taking the, the reflected image of, of the window and it's crunching it down into a little skinny line that lies along the edge of this, this curved surface. So that's what specular specular highlights are. Specular highlights are reflections of your light sources. And if you have a curved surface, it's going to, like the funhouse mirror, it's going to take those reflections and it's going to crunch them down. You're going to get a crunched down line if, you, if, it's, if, it's a, if it's a long edge like that. And you're going to get, see that little highlight dot? There's a, there's a little highlight uh, point right there. You're going to get a highlight point because now this corner here is acting like you know, the surface of a sphere. It's, it's, it's acting like a quarter of the sphere. So it's taking this whole image and they're all just getting crushed down the little, into a little line, whoop, up into a little tiny point like that. So that is what a specular highlight is. Specular highlights are just reflections of light sources. Now, the thing is that not only are, is the reflection of that window getting crunched down into the line, everything else is. You know, the, 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 the reflections of my wall, the reflections of my ugly face, you know, these are all getting crushed down into, into that little area. But the difference is, is that the, the highlight of the window outside, the, you know, the, the window outside is just so much brighter. It's so much brighter than whatever secondhand light is bouncing off of my face that really the only thing that we, we can see, you know, is the, is, you know, is that specular highlight of, 
the specular, you know, it's just the reflection of the light source. Everything else is just too dim for us to notice. So that is what a specular highlight is. Um, you know, a, a mirror. This is a specular reflection as well. Okay, but again, the thing is that this thing is is. If this is a, a diffuse reflection, it means that um, the light is completely changing its direction. It's it's going from all directions. You know, it doesn't matter where the light comes from. It bounces in all directions. Since this camera happens to be in one of those many directions, some of that light is scattering and it's reaching the camera. And it is nowhere near as intense as the kind of reflection you get off of this, you know, off of a direct light source. Well, even that is an indirect light source. But <coughs> that's... That, that's that's the difference. That's why you don't see specular highlights caused by, you know, secondary, um, secondary reflected light sources, right? It's only when you have something that is 100%, well, or close to 100%, specularly reflective, will you actually start to see everything else besides just the really, really bright outdoors. So that's... that pretty much covers specular highlights. Specular highlights, if you're, if you're going to deal with um, a reflection a reflection is nothing more than an extension of perspective. We've got the perspective of the real world extending into the mirror, right? This is just an extension of a perspective. This is just a window, you know, an extension of the current perspective, and it's going in there. So, you know, for mirror images, you know, any kind of thing like that, you have to think, you know, with a mirror image, you cut a hole, it's going into the outside world. You've extended perspective. And when you do the same thing with specular highlights, well, since a specular highlight is a specular reflection, it's the same thing. It's an extension of perspective that may or may not be distorted by whatever surface you've got. But as long as you have, you know, flat planar surfaces, like this, this is a flat planar surface, you're going to get a, an undistorted, but, you know, an extension of perspective. So that means that whenever you deal with a, a specular highlight, the placement of the highlight is very, very important. Because right now, you know, this, this planar surface, You'll only see a, a specular highlight if the surface is angled in such a way that it's going to catch. It's going to catch the, the reflected light and, you know, smack it into your face again. Um, so the same thing can be said for any kind of um, specular reflection, right? I, I don't know if you can see much of a specular... Oh, yeah, you can, there you are. You can see the funhouse mirror effect of, of the, the windows. And that's because the surface, as it curves, it... There's a certain angle because it's a curving. Uh, it's a curving angle, right? In the case of this mirror, there's only a limited range. This mirror, boom, has has to be angled like this. It's got to be angled like this. Angled any other way, you know? Angled any other way, it doesn't catch. It doesn't catch the the, the window. Okay, so there's only a very narrow range that you can get before it actually reflects. You know, the window. The same thing can be said for this. Because this mirror, this mirror surface is a funhouse mirror, and it's curving, only this angle right here, only, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, you can see my, the, 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 the specular reflection of my hand. Only that specific angle will, will you be able to see the, the, the window. So you have to take perspective. You've got to distort it. You've know, you got to figure out what is the precise angle you know, where I can see the light source, you know, where am I sitting, where is the surface I'm, uh, I'm looking at, which way is it angled, what angle does the surface have to be before I catch the, the, the reflection of my light source. That's where you put the dot, that's where you put the, the specular reflection. So whenever you move around or your object moves around, your specular reflection is going to ch start changing. And I spoke about diffuse reflections, right, uh, about direct reflect, um, Direct lighting, right? You know, you've got you've got lighting that shines onto my on, on, onto my face here, okay? But now, you see how whitish this reflection is here? That's because my face is greasy. That's because I'm 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 an unclean guy, and I have skin oil. <laughs> my skin oil is reflective, right? My skin oil is reflecting the window outside, and because my face surface is curved. You know, there's a certain there's a certain angle where you know my face is giving off of, you know, the same distorted funhouse reflection, except, you know, the surface of my skin is not, you know, plasticky smooth. It's it's not, you know, smooth like glass. So it, it's kind of shattering the image a little bit, and it's it's diffusing the light. So that is a specular reflection as well. It's a funhouse reflection. Um, it's a good thing I've got such an unclean room. You know, even the case of something that is transparent, 
you get 